Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video on High Pixel Skyblock. And this is 5 Major Mistakes That Are Ruining Your Build Part 2! So guys, basically I already made a part 1 of this video and it did pretty well. But mostly, I got tons of positive feedback by people saying like, hey, the video helped me and all this stuff, so I decided to make a part 2 of that video. So that video was kind of lacking, and there was a lot of things that you can do to become an even better mage after you follow the steps in the video listed. So for this part 2 guide, I'm going to be going over everything you need to officially do floor 4 and even floor 5 dungeons when it comes out, and how to be prepared and ready and how to easily get to Catacombs 15 and all the levels for with no difficulty at all. So starting off with number one is the late game mage items. Okay guys, so here I am in the Dungeons Hub and in the last video I talked about how you want a Bonzo Staff uh, for your main mage weapon. However, times have changed now and the Bonzo Staff got a major nerf. So I recommend that you get a Dreadlord Sword, and I have one right over here. So the great thing about a Dreadlord Sword is that you do not need Ultimate Wise 5 on it. Ultimate Wise 3 works just as well, as you can see it only costs 24 mana, and this will actually carry you well into dungeons, until you can get something like a Spirit Scepter. So a little bit about the Spirit Scepter, I actually got the Spirit Scepter on stream and I got it entirely off contraband money. So I'd just like to say thank you to Necrova and EKB, those were my main donos. Necrova gave me over 10 million coins, so shout out to Necrova. So yeah, this is a Spirit Scepter, it is a really, really expensive endgame mage item right over here. And this thing is going to carry you well into Floor 5. So many people are like, oh my god, a Spirit Scepter, it's so unaffordable. Is it even worth it? Well, let's see if a Spirit Scepter is worth it in a dungeon run. So, I'm going to enter here, and as you can see, it's just shredding, okay? As you can see, it's just it just shreds through everything imaginable, okay? You're going to have... No trouble with dungeons or anything. As you can see, Keltor, just instant death. Everything is pretty much just instant death against these angry archaeologists, right? Then I can use my, uh, I can use my Dreadlord Sword because the Spirit Scepter costs a ton of mana, right? Uh, so I can just spam this against them, and then I can do some of that. And yeah, so this is this is kind of what you want to be doing. You want to be spamming the Dreadlord Sword, and then at the same time, you also want to be spamming your Spirit Scepter in between. So against large areas of mobs, go in with the Spirit Scepter, and then you can also do this with a Frozen Scythe, by the way, just keep that in mind. Uh, I don't, I didn't go for a Frozen Scythe because I didn't, I didn't want to spend that much on like a second, on a secondary weapon, but then I realistically, if you have an infinite budget, you do want to also have a Spirit Scepter in your second slot here. So as you can see, it's just absolutely OP, the Dreadlord Sword, especially the epic ones. Because they're just so cheap and they're like really good, okay? And mostly they don't cost any mana. Like they're so cheap in terms of mana. So then I don't recommend you keep your Bonzo Staff around at all. Because it actually does more damage than a Bonzo Staff, keep in mind. Because they just, they just nerfed Bonzo Staff so hard that it's not even worth going for Bonzo Staff anymore. Instead you should definitely go for a Dreadlord Sword. Um, the Bonzo Staff has like a slightly faster projectile, but then honestly it doesn't matter that much. Um, it's like, it costs less mana and it's just better. Okay, so I'm going to go into, into this room right now, if I can go into it, please, please, please. So, uh, just to show you, uh, how much damage is it doing? DC is doing a solid 22k right there, see? So it's still doing a solid 22k. Obviously though, a Spirit Scepter, way better idea, okay? But it does work against things like Shadow Assassins. But look, they're here. They all die, they just instantly die, look at that. Every single mob there died, which is why it's not good going for Frozen Scythe, because you would actually struggle with that uh, otherwise. 
So yeah guys, I hope you understand how good the Spirit Scepter is. So if you have some money stepped up, don't have any doubts and buy the Spirit Scepter. Really. It might go down in price later, but still, you should take advantage of being one of the best mages out there with the Spirit Scepter right now. Alright, now on to the next point of the video. Armor. So, as a mage, going into floor 5, doing floor 4, being a late game mage, you know, you should be going for, well, pretty much one specific armor set. And it is this one I have right here. So this is the 3 fourths Legendary Zombie Soldier Armor and the Bonzo Mask. So in the first part of this video, I talked about the epic Zombie Soldier and Bonzo Mask, and that is definitely more of a mid-game armor set for Mage. So that set is great and all, but it's really lacking in EHP, and this is just so much of an upgrade. The Legendary Armor is literally insane. So I have seen so many mages get adaptive armor for the late game. Don't get adaptive armor. Adaptive is pretty bad, I, I gotta say. Compared to this, adaptive is terrible. While adaptive might give you more health, in terms of EHP, this is so much better. Because even though adaptive might have like a thousand more EHP, like if you look here, in this thing, while adaptive might have a thousand more, this thing has two times that because of the Bonzo Mask ability, which means that when you when you don't die, you know, instead of dying, you respawn. That is literally an insane ability that the Bonzo Mask has. And the rest of the armor by itself is also insane, giving more health and defense than adaptive and intelligence for that matter. So that is the armor set. So this armor set's gonna probably be eight to ten million coins, but it is totally worth it for the price. So as a recap, Dreadlord Sword. Okay, don't go for a Bonzo uh, staff anymore. I said that in my original video. Now, uh, honestly, this is gonna serve you better. Uh, the Bonzo staff might do a little bit more damage just outright, like maybe like by one or two k. The thing is, this thing has just such a dramatically lower mana cost that you will be able to survive longer with the Dreadlord Sword for sure. Like, definite Dreadlord Sword is the way to go. On top of the Dreadlord Sword giving you a way more intelligence than Bonzo Staff in Dungeons. So, one thing I missed in my last video was the pet. Okay, I didn't really talk that much about the pet you should get. And for Mage, without a doubt, no exceptions, you need the Legendary Sheep Pet. Yes, Legendary. Here is why Legendary Sheep is just so good. So if I go to my Pets menu right now, here is my Sheep Pet. So an Epic Sheep Pet has all of the stats, but it does not have this Dungeon Wizard perk. So many people are like, oh, Dungeon Wizard, that's just useless. It just increases your mana while in dungeons. That's not that good. You have no idea how in overpowered that perk is. Basically, it increases all your mana by 19%, which means that I have 1,700 mana right now, right? So if you only had 100 mana, then that would be worthless. And that's still how people think of it. But 1,700 mana, and you all have almost 20% of that, and things just get absolutely crazy. So legendary sheep pets go for, to my knowledge, about uh, two to three million on the auction house. And if you're lucky, you can pick up an epic sheep pet for very cheap and upgrade it with the NPC cat. And that's what I did. Um, and I saved money by doing that because when I was getting my legendary sheep pet, it cost seven million on the auction house. And I saved around four million coins by using cat you don't stand to save that much anymore, but still, uh, consider using cat if you get a really good price on your epic sheep. Also, a sheep pet is very, very expensive to level up. I've spent over 5 to 6 mil, I'd say, uh, on alchemy, just leveling it up. So, again, it follows the theme. Mage is a very expensive class. Don't go for mage. It's the best class, but if you don't have money to, like, absolutely burn, then... Uh, yeah, you're not going to be doing much, and that's the problem that I see, that people are trying to be mage, but they don't have the reserve funds for it, and they just, they just drag down the entire party. 
So if you're going to be a mage, don't be like all those guys in wise dragon armor with their dreadlord swords only. And spend some good money if you're going to do floor 4, really. And it's just going to help out your entire team for sure. So, number four is talismans. So in the last video, I said that you needed full bizarre talismans for mage, and that doesn't really work anymore. So basically, for mage now, you have your mage beam, of course, right? So that mage beam makes it so basically you can attack like the melee of your weapon from a far distance away. What happens is, since you use the mage beam so much, it actually is worth it in fact, to reforge your talismans for intelligence and damage. So yeah, that's right. What talisman gives you intelligence and relative damage? Well, that is the handy reforge of Demonic. So as you can see, Demonic gives you two strength on a, on a uh, rare. And as you can see, here's a legendary five strength and 17 intelligence. That's just broken. And, as you can see, you don't lose the insane amount of damage that you do with Bazaar, and you get a lot of intelligence as well. With this, I can still do 100k with the Spirit Scepter, with the Mage Beam, and then I can do 100k with the ability. And that makes an absolutely deadly combination, where you can basically do 200,000 DPS every single second just by going like that. It's just absolutely broken. Alright guys, and finally, for number 5 mistake that mages make, you know, the part of the updated guide. You know, in this video I've kind of followed the old guide, but I've kind of just elaborated on that and showed how you can take your mage to the next level. But for number 5, I have something different. And basically, for number 5 last time, I told them to enjoy the experience. And even though Mage is been nerfed, um, you know, you can still enjoy it. But now, with new items like the Spirit Scepter and with all of this stuff, really, Mage is still the best class in Skyblock. But now, I have to tell you one thing. If you're going to be a Mage, make sure you can afford it. And make sure that you're actually a productive member of your team. I've seen so many mages and tanks, those are the main class that suffer from this, where they just want to be the class and they don't have the actual money to get the necessary gear. And what happens with this is that it just hurts everybody. The person that doesn't have enough money, he doesn't meet the class milestone in damage or damage taken, healing given, all that stuff, right? They don't meet the class milestone, so they don't get enough XP for the run. And the entire team suffers because it just racks up death and you get a lower score. So if you're going to be a mage, please play a class that you can actually handle. Don't try floor 4 unless you have at least, you know, if you, if, I mean, I would recommend a spirit scepter, but then a bonzo staff can work. Definitely going to want the legendary zombie soldier. Don't go to floor 4 with epic zombie soldier. You, you know, it's just a kind of elaboration, making it... Uh, a better video with better guides. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!